So now that we've understood how to simplify the model, I'll show you now the results of a parametric rotation. So in this model, we've defined a parametric which has a single parameter, which is the rotation of the gear. And we solve the model 25 times, and we rotate the gear through a total angle of 12 degrees. The gear actually has 30 teeth, so a 12 degree rotation will take you from the initial position where you're directly aligned with the slot, uh, past the position where you have a direct alignment with the tooth, and it finally ends up where you're once again perfectly aligned with the slot. And we'll just do a quick validation, which is a dry run of the parametric, to show you what happens. So you can see now the gear is rotating beneath the sensor. And now it's aligned, the tooth with the pull piece. And now we're coming to the end of the parametric where we're getting into alignment with the slot again. Now, for each step of the parametric, we're going to calculate the flux linkage in the coil. We're going to calculate also the Y component of the magnetic field at a point which is just below the sensor pull piece and we'll calculate a contour plot on the symmetric face of this section of the gear and that'll give us a nice animation which is helpful to make sure that the model is performing as we expect it to. Now I can show you the parametric results. We've already run this model and first thing we'll look at the animation and you can see again this is a vector potential plot which is sort of like field lines in three dimensions so that confirms that the parametric basically did what we wanted it to do. So now we have data showing what happens when you have complete alignment with the tooth or with the slot and we'll plot those to get a quantitative idea of the performance of the sensor. First thing I'm going to plot is the magnetic field as if we're looking at a hall type sensor. That opens up the autograph window and you can see the variation Maybe I'll just change the axis so that the minimum is zero. At the beginning of the rotation, you have the pole piece aligned with a slot, and that gives you the minimum value of flux beneath the pole. Then as you get into alignment, you get a maximum value of the flux. And then as you rotate further, once again, you're aligned with a slot. Now, for the variable reluctance sensor, we're interested in flux linkage. And I'm just going to hide that value for the Y component. So you can see, again, the flux linkage is a minimum when you have the pole piece aligned with the slot. It becomes a maximum when you have the pole piece directly aligned with the tooth and returns back to a minimum. And once again, I'm going to change the axis. Now you can see there's actually less of a variation of the flux linkage. But remember with the variable reluctance sensor, it's not the flux linkage itself that you can measure. You can only measure the change in the flux linkage which produces the voltage. So we'll take the derivative of this curve and that shows you the kind of waveform that you would see. And the actual voltage that you would obtain from this sensor would be dependent on the number of turns and the speed of rotation of the gear. So that shows basically how you would analyze the performance of a sensor. So this kind of parametric basically is evaluating the performance of a sensor over its range of operation. So the next thing we'd like to do is use a parametric to actually get into the design aspects where you're modifying the sensor to improve its performance or perhaps optimize materials. And I will show you that in another model where we're going to vary the height of the magnet.